Hello everyone! I hope that you're doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka and I welcome you to my channel. As always, I'm so grateful that you're listening, subscribing and commenting. I really appreciate the support. In this video, I wanted to speak to you about a question that a viewer asked recently about street smarts for INFJs. Um, she's a female INFJ and she was asking about how, as an INFJ, you can travel safely in the world or live by yourself in the world. Especially because a lot of times, as you can imagine, as INFJs, we're in our heads and we don't actually pay attention to the surroundings. We kind of spend way too much time ruminating and thinking and overanalyzing. And so we don't actually pay attention to our physical surroundings a lot of times. And so in that regard, also, we can end up giving the wrong signals to the people around us, especially men, if you're a female INFJ or a woman as, as a male INFJ. <clears throat> and I thought that was a really interesting and important question, because as you can imagine, I have been living and, you know, traveling around the world by myself for a while now. And I do remember the first time I did it, it was a big learning experience for me. It was it was a big learning experience because what it does is that it kind of forces you to come out of your head, to stop being in your head so much, and then to come into the real world almost instantaneously. It's extremely important because what happens is that if you don't do that, is that you start losing money or you start losing things or you start losing important things to you. So, for example, the first time I traveled by myself, I was... I think the first time I traveled by myself, I went to Australia. And so I chose Australia because I had a friend there. But what happened was that she decided she was going to do different things and our travel plans didn't match up. So I had to go travel on my own after. And so obviously, as soon as I started you know, booking things on my own and kind of traveling on my own, instantaneously, it was as if a switch turned off or on in my head where I couldn't spend all of my time in my head anymore. And I had to instantaneously, as if like, you know, you have to suddenly grow up. Yeah, you're like, all right, I guess I can't rely on anyone else anymore. And so you have to almost like from one second to another grow up as an INFJ, which is, I think, the most important thing that can actually happen for an INFJ to realize that, yeah, it's good. I like spending time in my head. Great. Awesome. But I don't want to do that all the time because it's not conducive to me living in the real world. It's not even just travel, just like being in the real world right now as a person living at home or whatever it might be. It's still pretty important because otherwise, if you're not living in the real world, you might end up missing you know, important payments for whatever it might be your school loan or bank payments or things like that. Or you might end up paying extra fees because you don't have enough money in your bank because you're not paying attention to it. Or you might m end up missing payments for your electricity or your water and it might get shut down and you know, things like that. Like, obviously, I'm exaggerating a bit, but these are like real world physical things that we have to take care of. But as INFJs, as I said, you know, we kind of end up spending way too much time in our heads and forget that there is this real world that we have to take care of. So... I don't think necessarily that you need to do anything beforehand in order to become a more a better traveler or be less in your head because what will happen as I said automatically is that you'll start losing things or you'll start losing money and then it'll kind of switch back you switch you back because we don't like wasting my money we don't like wasting time and anytime we're losing things, we're losing important things, we're losing money, it's a waste of time for us. You know, it means that we need to go back and make that money or we need to go back and buy that thing. And especially if it's an important thing, then we're especially upset by it and it'll be really, it'll prod us to become extremely alert. So for my Australian trip, when I was on my own for the first time, I started booking all these hostels and not realizing that, you know, it's going to be... I didn't really do that much research because I was like, well, I guess I'll just choose one. It should be okay. And it ended up, ended up being a party hostel, uh, of course, because it's Australia. And it was extremely noisy and I was not able to sleep. And so that in itself was like, you know, as you can imagine, for me, sleep is extremely important. And so I was like, all right, I need to pay a little bit more attention. That was like a little bit more attention next time around I, I booked a hostel. And then because I wasn't because I had to pack, repack, pack, repack, kind of thing. Every single time I left a hostel, 
sometimes if I wasn't paying attention, I would leave a couple of things behind. And I noticed that I left a pair of slippers that were really important to me because a friend of mine had bought them for me in a hostel. I don't know which one I left it in and I couldn't go back because I'd already traveled to the next destination. And so again, that kind of prodded me a little bit to be like, all right, okay, I don't want to lose any more things, especially important things to me. And so I need to pay a little bit more attention. And so I started doing this kind of routine where, first of all, I would check all of my surroundings before I left the place. If I was in the hostel, I'd make sure I'd, I'd flip the bed sheet, I'd flip the pillow, I'd look under the bed, you know, things like that. Even if I didn't think there was anything underneath, it's just like a good thing to do. But I also always checked the four or five essential things that are extremely important to me that I did not want to lose. Obviously, my laptop was one of them. And then my phone, my wallet, my water bottle, and a couple of other items that were important to me that I was carrying from home. And so if I had all those four items, four or five items, I was happy. Even if I lost a couple other things, it was not that much of a big deal. But those four or five items were extremely important. So whenever I left a place, even if it was a cafe and I was there for a few seconds, I'd always check, do I have my wallet? Do I have my phone? Do I have my water bottle? Do I have my laptop, right? If I'm carrying my laptop. And so this is like a routine. And the more I did, the, did it, the more I got used to it. And even nowadays, when I'm just going, you know, walking around Toronto, I'm always checking. I'm always checking to make sure. Do I have my phone? All right, good, good. Yeah, that's great. Just because I know how distracted I can become. And so if I can just kind of systemize these checkups, you know, or routinize them kind of, it, I don't have to actually think about it anymore. It just becomes kind of part of my day, my daily routine. Now, I've lived in Chiang Mai or Thailand for the past few years, and Chiang Mai is pretty safe. I mean, you can leave your stuff for days on end and no one will touch it. I've left... People have left their laptops in the cafe and just walked off and gone to have dinner or lunch and came back and it was still exactly the same. Nothing had been touched. People have been given their wallets back. You know, people have left their keys and their motorbikes and then the next morning have had that the guard give it back to them saying that, you know, you left your key in, the, in your motorbike. Be careful. And so it's so safe there that I guess sometimes I get a little bit less vigilant, less alert. But in general, as soon as I live, leave Chiang Mai, Toronto's pretty safe as well, but not as safe as Chiang Mai. Um, but as soon as I live, leave Chiang Mai and go somewhere else, like Vietnam obviously is ex a little bit less safe. Um, or India, obviously, you have to be extremely careful with your stuff there. So as soon as I go somewhere else, I'm, I kind of go back into alert mode. Now, I wanted to kind of speak a little bit about daily routines or kind of have, have, kind of putting these things into your schedule. So. I know that I am not good at making sure that my bank, ba bank balance is at the right level. So I have alerts set up. I have alerts set up for my banks that makes sure that lets me know that, you know, that my if my bank balance falls below a certain level, it'll let me know. Or uh, credit card statements. I've automi automatized all of it because I just, I don't remember. I don't remember every month. Oh, I have to pay my credit card. I don't remember by my bills. And so everything as much as possible, I've automatized it. It just automatically gets out of, comes out of my account. And once a month, I check all of my accounts to make sure everything's okay. Once a month or twice a month. And so I would recommend that if you are the kind of person who gets too much in their head and kind of forgets about the physical world, to automatize as much as possible all of the things that you can automatize, right? So bill payments, make sure that they're automatic. My property taxes come out of my account automatically. Um, all of the mortgage stuff, expect like all of the bills that are important automatically come out of my account because I don't want to think about it. I don't want to miss them. I don't want to be in my head doing my work and forget that I have to pay a bill. The same thing with, you know, messaging important people or um, mess calling my parents, things like that. When I'm in Chiang Mai, I put it on my schedule because I know I'm not going to remember it. And so these kind of real world things just put it on your schedule, like put it, if you have a to-do list, put it on your to-do list. I have a weekly schedule that I follow, and so I kind of put it into my schedule so I know I need to do these things. Message this person back, you know, just put it in your schedule. If you're not going to remember, just do it. Also, when you're traveling, there are certain things that you have to do constantly, like just like constantly be looking for new hostels or new hotels, constantly be looking for new SIM cards or phones, constantly, or like, uh, data plans or whatever it might be, constantly doing the same thing over and over again. And so the first couple of times you're going to make a mistake 
And it's okay. It's okay to make that couple of mistakes as long as you learn from it, right? And so I did. I'm the first couple of times, even I would say the first five times I did these things, I made mistakes because I, I would not choose the right plan or I didn't do enough research or I didn't talk to enough people or whatever it might be. And then as time goes on, you learn from your mistakes and you stop doing that. And so I would like to say that you don't need to be too crazy about this. You don't need to be like, oh my God, I need to do all these things and I can't travel until I do these things. Just relax. As it happens, I am just a quick learner. So as time goes on and you're on the road or you're on your own, things will come up. Yeah, you might make a couple of mistakes, but as things happen, you'll keep on learning from it and then you'll keep on adding it to your system and you'll be able to get over that staying in your head zone and forgetting about the real world part of your life. Um, also, I would say if you are traveling, make sure that you have a little bit of time or space in the day to be in your head. I would always, always, always schedule my days out so that I go out and have fun and all that stuff, do my sightseeing or whatever it is. And then a couple of hours before I go to sleep, I have on my own to be in my head, to imagine, to dream, to daydream, to ruminate, to analyze, do all of that stuff that I need to do as an INFJ. And so I obviously have that here as well. In any case, wherever I am, I have those couple hours before I go to sleep to ruminate and to analyze and to be an INFJ. And so always have that, even in your hostel, I've said this before, always in your, even, even if you're in your hostel, have a space of time where you just are on your own, where you can be by yourself and you can daydream and ruminate and analyze. So you can get over that part of you and you're not just completely eliminating it out of you because that's not something that you want to do. I don't think it's actually even possible. That's what I would do. These are some of the things I would kind of add into the list for you to do if you want to live on your own or travel on your own. Um, if you have questions or if there's something that I haven't explained properly, let me know. There's so many different things I could talk about on this subject, but I want to keep this video short. So any extra questions, let me know and I'll do a follow-up video. Again, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you the next time around. Bye!